Hi everyone, Merry Christmas. Just a bit of a strange story today about a Christmas party we recently went to. I got an invitation to this Christmas party a few days ago. The strange thing was, was it was from the father of a colleague of mine from like three years ago. I hadn't seen him for ages. Well, I've kind of bumped into him occasionally at, at the uni, but we rarely speak to one another. His wife is also Chinese, my wife's Chinese, and they know each other, but they haven't seen each other for at least probably six months or maybe a year. So it's not like we're good friends or anything, we're just sort of casual acquaintances at best. Anyway, they invited us to their Christmas party, which was, we knew them to be Christians. Uh, we weren't quite sure what denomination of Christian, but the whole the whole concept of the party seemed a bit strange. They said they were going to hold this uh, like a Christian play out the back, like a nativity play out the back in their back garden. And I thought that was a bit weird because I've been, I've, I was raised Christian. I've never seen that before. We often had these sort of plays at church, but never at somebody's house. Anyway, uh, the day of the party arrived and uh, I was a bit worried because the government had sent out warnings about everyone trying to avoid, you know, avoiding lots of people, avoiding family even they were suggesting at one point, make sure you wear masks and all that. So I was a bit, I was half expecting that these people would probably try to make us wear a mask at their house and all the rest of it. And I'd pre, pre-planned with my wife that if they were to do that, I'd just make an excuse to leave. I wasn't going to go to a party that I had to do all that. Anyway, we arrived at their house, kind of in sort of the richer part of town, um, and we were greeted by the lady, the Chinese lady, and she came racing out with a big smile on her face and waving and everything, and she came up and hugged my wife, so the whole idea of masks and all that went out the window. It wasn't, it wasn't there, which was good. She walked us through her house out to the back garden, and there were lots of people out the back. I didn't know any of them. I'd only casually seen uh, the father-in-law, so the guy who invited us, once maybe in my life. Um, anyway, we sat around there for a while just chatting and uh, the mother of the my colleague, I still hadn't seen my colleague at this point, she was chatting with me and she seemed okay. Um, everyone was shaking hands and hugging and all the rest of it. Nobody was worried about in, at the pandemic at all. You may as well, there may as well not been a pandemic. That was how close everybody was. Uh, I wasn't quite sure how who half these people were, but I just kind of kept to myself. I was just looking after my children and making sure they were okay. Finally, the play was due to start. The, the host lady, she asked us all to go up the back and sit on these chairs, and out came all these kids all dressed up as Joseph and Mary and the three wise men and all the rest of it. They're all these young ladies. Um, when I say young, they'll maybe in their early 20s. Some of them had babies and so on. It felt a little bit, I suppose, like a cult, like you'd just stumbled upon a cult. There were all these people dressed in sort of white gowns and <laughs> holding babies. But I knew there was going to be a play, so it wasn't too out of out of place. Anyway, people started singing and uh, reading poetry and doing the play and so on. It was all very Christian. It wasn't particularly strange. My wife found it very strange. Like, she's from China. She'd never seen such a thing. But for me, it was just a normal sort of, you know, day out with the Christians. Anyway, a dog which was there just randomly rode, uh, randomly walked up to baby Jesus, who was just a plastic doll lying in the middle of the grass, and then he kind of walked up and sat next to the Jesus, sat next to baby Jesus, and rolled over and started scratching himself, and everyone went silent. So I thought I'd sort of crack a crack a bit of a joke, and I said. And the strange four-legged beast approached baby Jesus, rolled over, and started scratching himself. I got a couple of laughs, but most people found it maybe a bit out of place or a bit offensive. I thought it was funny. (laughs) Anyway, they continued their play, singing, dancing, whatever else they were doing. Finally, that was finished, and we all uh, headed down towards the sort of the main party area with the table. The funny thing was I still hadn't seen my colleague, you know, a colleague from three years ago. His wife was getting a bit upset, and anyway, she gave him a call saying, you know, in Chinese, you know, where are you? What are you doing? Come over quickly. Everyone's here. So obviously he didn't want to come, or he had some business to do. I don't know. It was Christmas uh, Eve, so what could he have been doing? I don't know. Anyway, finally he rocked up, and he's he's a bit like me, this guy. He doesn't like to talk very much, and he doesn't really get on with most people most of the time. Um... He's a bit of a medieval expert. I think that's sort of what his job is. He's a historian. 
Um, and yeah, he's into swords and things like that. So we've got a lot in common, but we just don't talk to one another. We're both fairly standoffish. Uh, we can get on. We can t- do basic conversation with one another, like, you know, oh, how's work going? Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. How's your work? Yeah, well, yeah not bad. And that's about it. Anyway, we, we did had that conversation together and then I kind of moved on and looked after my children a bit more and there's lots of people there. And anyway, before the meal started, uh, the host of the party, so the father of this colleague, he uh, said grace, but I didn't realize he was saying grace. And so here I am mucking around with my kids, making a big noise and all the rest of it. And I just happened to turn around and see that he was trying to say a prayer. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was just interrupting this guy's Everyone was quiet except me and my kids. And immediately I felt really, oh gosh, what did I just do? So anyway, Grace went on for a couple of minutes and finally that finished and I sat down and I thought, oh, I've got to apologize to the host because, you know, he's, he was a guy in his late 70s, maybe 80s. And um, he was hosting this party, so I didn't want to be the, the bad guy. So I went up and apologized. I said, oh, sorry about before. I didn't realize you were saying grace. My kids were being a bit rowdy and I was talking to them. I honestly didn't know. And he kind of just said, oh, it's okay. And he kind of stayed silent for the next minute or two. Uh, I thought, okay, he's angry. Um, but then suddenly he started talking to me. I guess he spent that one or two minutes uh, coming up, you know, trying to forgive me or whatever. And he started speaking to me and he was quite kind and all the rest of it. Uh, he offered me some punch that he had made, some orange, uh, what do you call it? Orange squash or something. <laughs> it was quite nice. Anyway, he was talking and saying that, oh, yeah, he's had a bit of a busy uh, two weeks, blah, blah, blah. Um, he was asking me how I was going and all that. And, oh, yeah, I said, I've met you once before. I met you, I met him at a temple, actually, a Buddhist temple a couple of years ago. And uh, that got him talking about, oh, yes, recently he went to a meeting, uh, like last week or whatever with some Buddhists about, and I said, I asked him about what? And he said, oh, about the pandemic. And I said, oh, okay, what, what exactly about the pandemic? And he seemed a bit standoffish. So I thought, okay, they were doing something a bit strange at this meeting. But I, I didn't want to push him, but I just showed that I was interested. So I said, oh, okay, what, what exactly about? Do you mean like, what about the pandemic did you, were you talking about like the management of it or the mismanagement? I was trying to hint to him that I was open to any idea. Um, because I know lots of people are a bit scared to talk because they're worried that, you know, you'll get accused of being against this or that or not wearing a mask or whatever. I was just trying to show that I was open to him. But he seemed he was still a bit standoffish, but I knew there was something they talked about that was against the, the mainstream narrative. He says, oh, yeah, we just talked about how people are sort of coping with the pandemic uh, mentally and so on. I said, oh, okay, um, so that, what else did you talk about? And he goes, um, oh, okay. I kind of forget. Basically, he didn't want to tell me. So I suspect it was, I suspect that we're on the same page. I suspect he was, this meeting was about people who are not for, you know, segregation and uh, so on. I mean, he's a very uh, strong Christian. I found out that they're actually Mormon. Um, I'm not exactly sure what Mormon beliefs are, but I know they do have some things against, you know, forced uh, if I'm mis- not mistaken, like, uh, for example, blood transfusions and all like all the rest of it, um, I'm not sure if that's Jehovah's Witness. Anyway, either way, there's I know they've got some strange, well, strange, whatever. They've got some interesting beliefs that perhaps they don't agree with what the government are doing. So anyway, I had a good chat with him, and uh, finally he had to go off and do his hosting duties. And then I got started chatting with this other young bloke. Um, he was maybe in his late... 20s, maybe mid to late 20s. He wasn't very old. He had a young wife and a young child. And yeah, I started chatting with him and we, you know, I'd never met him before. And yeah, we seemed to pretty much get on with one another. Uh, He was interested in Japan. He loves Japanese anime. I'm not a big fan of Japanese anime, anime by any stretch of the imagination, but I do like Japan. I've lived in Japan. And anyway, we're chatting, 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 and he was having a good old time talking about his anime and talking about Japanese culture and all the rest of it. And yeah, we just got on. It was just weird because, you know, I'm 42. He was only maybe 26 or 27 and we just really got on. I kind of turned to the side and I noticed that my colleague, who's my age or maybe a bit older, um, I could tell he was a bit upset. He was a bit miffed that, you know, I was chatting to some random guy. We were really getting on. But 
me and him, the colleague, we just couldn't even talk. You know, we could barely talk about the weather, let alone anything else. We'd known each other for quite a long time, but, you know, we had nothing in common uh, or didn't weren't able to chat to one another. But anyway, I was chatting to this young guy talking about Japan. We were putting on Japanese voices and, you know, we were talking about how the voice acting in anime is really good. Like, you know, the men really get into it in the voice acting and the voice actors are extremely famous in Japan and so on. And anyway, he had to go because his wife had to go somewhere and uh, he asked for my my Facebook, which I don't have. I said, oh, I don't really have, I have a Facebook, but it's kind of hidden. I don't use my real name. And I said, oh, that's no good. Uh, so I gave him my email and he was happy with that. And he sent me an email that afternoon, actually, thanking thanking me and saying that he was happy having a conversation, I'd like to catch up again. Again, we are completely different generations, but we got on so well. After that, I kind of, everyone had sort of cleared out of the party, um, except for the Chinese people, which my wife was still talking to, all these Chinese ladies. Oh, there's tons of young, like, Aussie ladies. Um, I don't know who they were, but I found out later that they were all related, which didn't surprise me. It turns out the old guy, he was sort of the head of this complete, <laughs> huge extended family. He's got like 11 or 12 grandchildren and nine or 10 great-grandchildren. So all these young ladies were actually his grandchildren and all these babies were his great-grandchildren. They're all very beautiful. I mean, the, the ladies, they're only maybe... Oh, some of them must have been 21 or 22. They were dressed like angels. They were dressed in sort of white and long blonde hair and all the rest of it. They were very, very beautiful. Um, but yeah, they're all mothers. <laughs> it, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be out of place to see this sort of thing in sort of some sort of cult or whatever, right? Some sort of uh, commune or whatever. But they were all very nice. Nobody was particularly weird. They were very Christian. They were all Mormons. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not going to put that. <laughs> I'm not going to hold that against them. So anyway, I, was, uh, I had nobody else really to chat with. Um, the Chinese ladies were just chatting together and I over, overheard their conversation for a little bit and just talking about their normal things. And So my kids wanted to go play, so I went racing around playing with them up the backyard. You know, I always play with my kids. I kind of run around and do cartwheels and climb up trees. We were just mucking about like that, kicking balls and all the rest of it. Anyway, when I came back, I could see... Um, my colleague, again, was a little bit, <laughs> he's a bit like me, as I said, he, he seemed a little bit jealous or upset, you know, the fact that I was running around like a man his age, running around, jumping around, and he's a bit maybe overweight and maybe not very physically active. And, you know, one of the Chinese ladies came up to me and said, oh, you're such a, in Chinese, you're such a big boy, you know, da hides a, um, basically meaning that I'm a, you know, I'm a man who's acting like a child by running around and, uh, jumping around and so on and it wasn't an, it wasn't sort of she wasn't being offensive she just sort of almost it was almost like a compliment I suppose saying that I I'm great at jumping around and running and all the rest of it and but yeah I could just see the look on his face it wasn't very good I noticed that it was probably time to leave it was like almost six o'clock and uh so we decided to, yeah, okay, better go. We were kind of the last guests there anyway we overstayed our welcome probably the only other people who were there were all family members so finally we walked out and uh, decided to take a few photos because there was, they had all these nice purple flowers and my mum, my mum, my uh, wife wanted to take some photos. So even when we were about to leave, they still we were still hanging about down the driveway taking photos. Anyway, my wife's friend, she came out and said goodbye and we raced off and for, for whatever reason, we kind of drove around the corner and then parked. We were, I don't know. We just were talking about what happened, and my wife and I were just interested in having sort of a, a debriefing, I suppose. And we just we were quite a long way from home, so we thought, oh, "I'll have a rest outside." So we just parked next to this Indian curry restaurant, which I wasn't allowed to go in, mind you, because of the stupid all the vaccine mandates and that. So I just parked outside this curry shop, and we were just chatting, chatting, chatting. And about five minutes later, this Chinese lady rang my wife and said, oh, sorry, I forgot to give you something. I thought, oh, and she goes, oh, where are you? I guess you're too far away. And we said, no, 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 we're just around the corner. So our little sort of hunch or whatever for just parking around the corner paid off because we went back there and the, all the kids had made all these sort of Christmas party bags to give to our kids. You know, they'd pan made, um, uh, what do you call it, gingerbread with sort of chocolates and all the rest of it <laughs> it was pretty good so yeah it was a bit strange and she seemed really happy that we were there and I was really surprised because we haven't seen them for so long and 
I don't have much in common with her husband and my wife and her almost never talked or rarely talked. Yeah, and they seemed to be so happy that we attended their strange Christian function. <laughs> anyway, that's the end of that little story. Today I've got another um, uh, another sort of Christmas party with my apparent best friend. It's not really a party, it's more of a, a luncheon in the park. But I almost never see him, but he really does classify me as his best friend. We've had a little bit, we've had a bit of a hot, cold relationship over the years. And anyway, he wants to see me, so we're headed down to the park with him. Uh, ordinarily, when I go to see him, he usually cancels or is late or <laughs> anything else. So I don't know how that will go, but we'll we'll see. I'm not planning to eat because today's Monday, and Monday is my fasting day or one of my fasting days. I so my wife said, "Oh, that'll be rude if I don't eat." And I said, "Well, look, I'm not going to keep breaking all my self rules, you know, if just for other people." Who cares? I mean, if I don't eat, that's not that's no skin off his teeth. I'll have a drink or whatever and just have a chat. That should be fine. Yeah, anyway, I'll let you know how that all goes. Um, sorry, just a bit of a rambling story today. I hope uh, it wasn't too boring. Talk to you soon. See ya.